One day in 2018 in Hawaii began with a disturbing message that shook the entire island. A ballistic missile threat approaches Hawaii. Find cover immediately. These are not training exercises. Fortunately, that alert turned out to be false. It arose due to a mistake by the rescue service personnel. However, four years later, this situation may repeat itself as a result of a real threat. CIPRI, Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, declares that the risk of using nuclear weapons is now the highest since the Cold War. This possibility is alarming to people all over the world. The main reason for the anxiety is caused by the fear of not understanding how events can develop if a nuclear war happens. What territories will be affected? Will the military be able to protect their country? What is the probability of surviving after a nuclear attack? What will happen to the planet and humanity if a nuclear winter happens? What countries are included in the so-called nuclear club that is possess nuclear warheads? This group includes the USA, Russia, Great Britain, France, China, India, Pakistan, and North Korea. Israel is also believed to have nuclear weapons. According to CIPRI, nine countries on Earth have have more than 13,000 nuclear warheads in their arsenals. Of all the existing nuclear powers, only the United States and Russia possess the nuclear triad. Therefore, we'll simulate a possible confrontation between these countries. The U.S. nuclear triad consists of land, sea, and air components. The land component is LGM-30 Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missiles with a destructive force 40 times greater than that of the explosion in Hiroshima. The missiles are located in underground silos capable of withstanding a close nuclear blast, and they're dispersed across several states in the Midwest, making this type of deployment less vulnerable. Also, one of the advantages of such a base is the ability to launch missiles quickly, within five minutes. In addition, in the event of the destruction of the launch control centers, these missiles can be launched remotely from the Air Command Center. The second type of carriers are air-launched missiles with nuclear warheads and nuclear bombs on Boeing B-52H Stratofortress and B-2 Spirit strategic bombers. The main advantage of this type of carrier is that, if necessary, the bombers can be withdrawn before the missiles are launched. It's also difficult to detect already launched missiles on enemy radars. This will make it difficult for the enemy's anti-missile forces to eliminate them. And more than 70% of all U.S. nuclear warheads are on Ohio-class nuclear submarines. Their main advantage is high maneuverability and difficulty in being detected by the enemy. Each submarine carries up to 24 Trident intercontinental ballistic missiles. Submarine-launched missiles are considered the most dangerous weapons in a hypothetical nuclear war. So what will happen if one of the countries nevertheless decides to use nuclear weapons? In the event of a real threat of a nuclear attack, the United States will act according to its single integrated operational plan. The primary task of strategic defense is to secure the security of the president and the key to the defense of the United States. If the president of the United States is outside stationary command posts, such as the White House Situation Room or the Presidential Emergency Operations Center, he communicates with the Pentagon through nuclear portfolio devices. After the Pentagon confirms that it is the president who gives orders, his actions cannot be rejected. But who will give orders if the president is at the explosion's epicenter during the first attack and dies? In this case, the order of succession is fixed in the Constitution. If the president is incapacitated, his place should be taken by the vice president. Next on the list, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the President of the Senate, the Secretary of State, and then the ministers follow in a particular order. So let us return to the possible attacks. The goal of Russia can be both the territory of the United States and one of the European countries of NATO. As soon as infrared reconnaissance satellites detect the control fire 
a plume of an intercontinental ballistic missile launch from a missile base in southern Russia. This information is reported to the U.S. president. The U.S. Royal Air Force Strike Command operates according to the instructions on nuclear alert. A priority flash is immediately sent to the airborne troops and ground forces on alert. Air crews located in different parts of the world operate according to a single integrated operational plan with targets and routes for each bomber. Within minutes, the combat-ready crews are heading to their pivot point near Russia. At the same time, missiles deep in the mines of the Midwest are put on high alert. Submarines with ballistic missiles on board are heading for the coasts of Russia, while combat submarines are sent in search of Russian submarine missile carriers to destroy them immediately. A Russian nuclear missile reaches its target in Western Europe. The president gives the order for a retaliatory strike. At the same time, the UK launches retaliatory nuclear strikes on major Russian cities, and Moscow gives the final order for a full-scale nuclear attack. As soon as Russian ICBMs rise into the atmosphere, a wave of American missile defense systems immediately come into action. At the stage of missile takeoff, they will try to eliminate them with onboard laser systems. Then ground-based interceptors will come into action. According to preliminary estimates, the missile defense system will be able to eliminate about 56% of ballistic missiles. And yet, half of the deadly weapons will be able to reach their destination. Simultaneously with the launch of the anti-missile system in the United States, an order is given for a full-scale response. The military in the Midwest fires missiles from underground silos. American bombers are heading for the release points of nuclear missiles. Submarines rise to the surface and launch. Russian missile defense systems are deployed to intercept missiles, but most of them reach their targets. At this time, the president, or the one who became his successor, together with the top military leadership, is taken on a special plane to an uncontaminated territory from where he'll continue to lead the country. Such a forecast is conditional modeling of possible development of events. But nevertheless, we must understand that no matter how the nuclear war develops, the losses will be colossal. It's highly likely that many large cities will be destroyed, as well as people caught in the epicenter of the explosions. And those who survive will be affected by radiation sickness with varying degrees of severity. Even countries not affected by nuclear attacks will live in a world with huge humanitarian problems. According to new research conducted by scientists, from the University of Louisiana, if a nuclear war breaks out between Russia and NATO, this catastrophe will affect the entire planet. According to scientists, the firestorms resulting from nuclear strikes will turn into smoke. This will block out most of the sunlight and lead to global crop failure, which in its turn will lead to global hunger. Also, modeling shows that it will immediately become colder in the first month after nuclear explosions on Earth. The planet's average temperature will decrease by 10 degrees Celsius, dropping in some regions by 30 degrees. This is a more significant decline than observed during the last ice age. The research showed that after the application of nuclear strikes, the temperature in the oceans will also drop rapidly. And this figure will not return to pre-war levels for a long time. The amount of sea ice will increase by billions of square kilometers. In the northern hemisphere, many large seaports will immediately be blocked. And further, sea ice will shift and not only block ports, but also cause a cessation of shipping in the northern hemisphere. This will lead to a cessation of trade and problems with the delivery of food to some regions. Lower temperatures and less sunlight will destroy all algae, the backbone of the food chain in the ecosystem. This is especially true for the North Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. In the oceans, as well as on land, famine will come. The research shows that in the Russia versus NATO model, it will take decades for the land to recover and hundreds of years for the oceans. Yikes, it's a scary scenario. And the first question that arises as a result of such forecasts is, 
How did humanity, with its level of development in science, philosophy, and humanism, come to the threshold of the end of civilization? We must immediately get rid of nuclear weapons in all countries. However, the appearance of this type of weapon in the 20th century made it possible to significantly reduce the number of global conflicts that lasted for years and created a long-lasting parity of forces between the largest countries. Now, the situation in the world has been brought to a high level of tension between nuclear leaders. Activists worldwide are putting pressure on their governments, trying to start the process of creating commitments to the non-use of nuclear weapons or complete nuclear disarmament. They act in the hope that the nuclear tension will be resolved. Otherwise, humanity will be the eternal hostage of this situation.